are not going to give you the option of the Yone or Aurora on blue side PSG. They are going to deny it, so they're going to cover their bases and kind of the the more expected red side bans here. Uh, but it means that the LG have to now ban the Aurora as well, right? Otherwise, you're just giving it over to PSG and they have the option to pick it. Nocturne is something we have seen first picked a couple of times today for G2. Obviously works really well alongside the Oriana, but then you are giving Knight his Oriana if he wants it. Also the Vi up and available, and I think Junji has been exceptional when he can get his hands on this pick. So potential to try and hyper-focus on towards that jungle matchup, because I think giving Shun that across could be a bit worrisome as well. They are hovering this Skarner here. I think Skarner does work well into Champions like Vi, where it's a bit more telegraphed when you're going to go in and you can preemptively get off that Skarner ult. But I still think the Vi kind of a tier above it in my eyes. Well, at least PSG did ban away Knight's Ari, so the very famous Knight Ari plus Vi turbo threat is not there. And instead, BLG are going to go the melee option. Grab that Sejuani synergy for the Jax very I mean, he's early just bins on. Bins Jax, right? He's just like, hey, can we just pick Jax all the time? Because I'm really good at this champion. I can win a team fight later on if you just give me this champion, please. And he just won that game. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm curious if they're trying to bait the Orianna pick out for Maple, and then Knight will go Silas into it. Because you've already got the Sejuani, and Knight's a really strong Silas player as well. And this could work out very well when you've already got, I mean, not a huge amount of ultimates uh, like available right now to be known, but I still think it's strong into some of the picks that are here. Instead, it is going to be the Smolder. Very strong scaling, something we saw kind of fall out of the meta for a little while, or at least we thought it would with some of the changes that happened. But in terms of scaling, he's just as strong as he has been for the last few months. Obviously not as strong as he was when he was first released, but still gives you that execution, still gives you that burn. You can still stack up to around the 20 minute mark. Poppy now locked in as well for PSG. And the other good thing about the Smolder is that it's flex pick here too. So you also don't have to fully give away, right? And the Poppy pick I really like as well because it denies something like the Callista, which could be taken here. Because it's already going to be a matchup for, that's decent for Ash in the top lane against the Jax, but it does deny a lot of these other picks. Even things like the Kai'Sa can struggle because that steadfast presence can't block the ultimate. So it makes things a little bit more difficult for Elk on when he wants to try and take these fights. But still going to go towards the Kai'Sa and still have that backline threat for what BLG are setting up as a dive. All right, and then in protection bands, because Kai'Sa doesn't have the strongest of lanes, want to take away the Ash, want to take away uh, some of those bullies down there, and BLG drops some bands in it. Could still see the Jin coming out from PSG. It's interesting because you kind of want something to uh, bridge you towards your Smolder getting stacked up, right? You need a little bit of damage in the early game if you're going to take fights. Obviously, you also have the option to just try not to take the fights and get towards that point, but I don't think that really is how either of these teams always play. And that's why I think a Callista ban for BLG is really good here, because you deny something like a Callista Ranada on this next rotation. Mm -hmm. It's also something that can bully out the Kai'Sa and gives you that bridge to the later portion of the game. I think it's just the easiest takeaway in this position. And then I think it becomes a question of what do you want to see for Betty? Maybe it is just the MF to try and go for, hey, Skarner, grab into MF combo and something that can bully out of that bottom side. But no Callista ban just yes, it's going to be the Renata problem instead. Interesting too, because PSG are going to have to fit some AP into their composition. So, you know, you're also looking at the previous Rumble ban. Um, the Kennen didn't really have the big Kennen moment that you yeah. wanted in the previous game. And so he's going to have to dig way deeper because the Aurora's ban, the Rumble's ban. Uh, we'll see how deep they go or if they actually do want to swap the Smolder. Instead, the Tristana ban comes out here I mean, away from now. Azure. I feel like he. I'm trying to remember this correctly, and I want to make sure I'm right before I say it. Udyr. Yes. How do we feel about Udyr top? I Not think great. he just he gets Poppy. I think he's fine with the Poppy, right? It's yeah, a decent you don't think the Poppy reflects? I don't think you need to. I think okay. you're just happy with where it is. The fact there's no Kalista either kind of takes away a lot of the value on this bottom side for BLG. So we're actually going to get Knight going back towards the Jays. So okay. this was something he was really good on back in like the 2021s and that. Um, when he was playing back on top esports. So not fully surprised to see it, but it's not something that I was expecting to see with the shift away. But obviously lethality builds, not something that you see a huge amount, but at least can match that push against the Smolder and not actually give over a ton of stacks to the Smolder because you're not playing that melee matchup in the mid lane.
And this is something, you know, people were like theory crafting on the 1418 bus that the Jay Scott, but never really had a strong foothold. You only yeah. saw like very small instances of it. So I do like, you know, pulling pulling it out here it gives them the possibility of that double poke. You know, Kaisa, if uh, Elk does go AP heavy route, then you also have uh, some poke options later for the standoffs. And then Nautilus, the last pick here for BLG. Contributing to that death fund again. Betty and Woody went for the Zio Rakan, which gives you a little bit of safety as the Zio, obviously later on with the Featherstorm, but also can do a lot of damage in the late game. I think it's also really interesting because BLG have kind of identified, hang on a second, PSG talent don't have a lot of engage tools. They're a lot better at poke, or sorry, for um, disengage. And when you look at BLG, Jace and probably an AP Kaisa, you're going to have a ton of poke damage that's there. And then the immediate follow-up from SH1 or a Nautilus. So I think BLG, as long as they can play this out slow, are actually in a really good spot where PSG talent just can't push forward enough to hit them. It feels like a range difference, really. Yeah. BLG have much more range when it comes to poke later on and hoping that you can put up a good show and uh, at least take us to game three. Yeah, you don't want to be remembered just for pushing BLG at MSI, pushing BLG in some games. Uh, you know, history really does remember the victors. So we'll see if they can get it over the line here. Smolder, of course, you know, once you get your rapid fire cannon, then you've got, you, you know, your range and your little bit of poke as well. But we'll see if they can actually get to that stage of the game because the Sejuani is also a great pairing with Jace. Part, part of the buffs, you know, for the Jace was the slow uh, when you go in the, for your melee form as well. So I feel like Shun in this game just has a lot of options with lanes. Like he has really, really good lanes to play around. All these BL, uh, BLG lanes should be fearsome, should be like creating advantages for themselves. And so then it's just up to Shun to like be able to track Jinjia, make sure the Skarner is not poking out through a wall uh, to mess up one of their lanes. And then lend that Sejuani CC to get them off the ground and really snowball them. I think that Shun this time around is in the position to have a way better game than we saw in the previous game on Aruka. It is kind of quintessential BLG. Like in, in the regular season in the LPL, they lost five of their eight first games in their series. So <laughs> almost losing to PSG in game one is kind of what we come to expect from them. Uh, Emily was talking about it on the desk as well. They just have really slow starts to series and then start to ramp it up. And that's why the best of ones just not yeah, their thing. It's just curse for them, right? <laughs> but yeah, I think the definitely the there is a bit of a meme there, but it has still been a very slow adaptation from BLG coming into Worlds and also then coming into what the meta has been. So I think BLG definitely have a lot if they manage to beat PSG Talon here to learn before they, uh, as they start to move on, even over the course of this weekend, right? But we'll have to see how that adaptation comes through as we get another different pick for Knight, something that we haven't really seen coming through, but we'll have to see if uh, the Jace is going to find and work wonders for him in this one. I mean, it's something Knight has, you know, quite a bit of experience on. One oh, of his yeah. top 10 most played, 76% win rate on it across the course of his career. It was one of, of, the, of the big flexes back when 369 actually played carry champions on yeah. top esports. They would flex things like the Jace, and, the, and then Knight would bring out something like a Zoe, and they'd play these super long-range compositions. But uh, now working instead with conjunction with Elk, I think it is going to be something that he'll feel right at home at if you can just find some of that early success. And as Co Kobe was already saying, the ability to play around Shun Go into melee form, stack the passive stun for the Sejuani. He's going to be perfect for BLG. Maple currently getting the push in the mid lane. Looks like uh, Jinja took a long route around his jungle. Has only just got to his blue buff after clearing out his wolf. So he's a slight bit behind where Shun is. Yeah, kind of going as expected here for BLG with their top pushing, with their bottom side pushing as well. Elk and on kind of nicely. Uh, getting Betty and Woody under tower, trying to deny as much as they can. Both junglers, as you say, will finish here towards the top, towards the crashing wave. And Bin will be able to... Can he fully get this one in? Those ranged minions just outside. A little bit annoying there, but uh, junglers might meet up on that Scuttle Crab regardless. Ginger's already pathing towards it. Shun actually looking for the mid lane instead, deciding he doesn't want to battle over the top side Scuttle Crab. Instead, he will go down towards the bottom side. On used the fact that Elk was looking for a Cheetah reset to get his cull to then move up as well. It looks like Ginger might try and sneak behind Bin with that wave not in the best of states for the BLG top laner. Yeah, and you can kind of tell on the moment of the comms too. Bin backing off uh, after he killed off those last couple of minions because the Skarner is 
One of the few junglers actually still loves, well. I mean, it's just stacks. That's all they want, really. <laughs> Shunjo almost dies, but he'll be okay. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, there was a look in from Shun, but even with Betty and Woody having the wave pushed up, Shun wasn't quite able to find the gank he was uh, fishing for. This is dangerous, though. Junja trying to get his camps right before Shun arrives. He'll get them, but Shun will arrive in time. The flash away from Junja gets him to safety. He no longer has that summoner for the next five minutes. So Junja reading correctly that Shun was going to try and go for the respawn of his Raptors camp there, but having to burn his flash makes this Skarner way less threatening on a dive, or a gank even. Now Shun hovering around bot side again. He's going to reset. Hey, Shun off to a nice start in this matchup. And again, he's got lanes that want to fight. He's got the flash advantage over enemy jungle. It just seems primed right now. Uh, it definitely is. And I think that the big thing that you have to look at as well, Kobe, is the bot lane. Look how far Betty has fallen behind Elk because of the way that wave was frozen, because of the fact that Shun came across. Like, Betty and Woody have actually struggled to unfreeze this lane. Now they'll be able to do it. Junja path towards his Krug, so he can be there first. But it's going to be about, you know, 200, 300 gold at the end of all things. And that's with Elk having got a reset to get his cult. Yeah, and again, he can continue to freeze here once more, so this doesn't have to realistically crash, because you do have the Nautilus coming up behind. Can he hold it out? Yeah, should be able to just hold it out from the wave. On is now reset, getting his own boots. And you've got the Sejuani still in the vicinity, so they're moving this Garner here to show his face onto bot side, just to try and bluff, essentially, threat that they can crash the wave. But BOG not having any of it on, essentially faking that his jungler is in behind him and kind of calling Junja, saying, are you really going to try and play this when you have no flash? I love that uh, point, especially because On does this so much. All the time. Oh, yeah. Where he, he fakes that someone is behind him, you know, even not in front of his own tower. A, a lot of the times, you know, walking into enemy territory, you can get free vision or free plays like that. Uh, it's so beneficial to both you and your jungler. Uh, of course, it, it, it kind of allows your jungler freedom on the other side of the map, too. But here we are on the grubs, and that will be number one. Shun has to use the, flash, uh, the smite for it, though. Knight's coming across. Maple working his way towards the river as well. Jun just should be able to secure at least one of these. Chucks out another rock at Shun and Knight. Bin now moving from the top side. Junja using his smite to secure the second grub, or the first for his team, but the second in totality. On here, Woody joining the battle as well. Bin still keeping that grub aggro. Shun has his smite back up and can get the Scuttle Crab and the Grub as well. But that was kind of what you want to see from BLG, this slow pace when it comes to the fight. So then you have to try and back up his PSG because without Woody there, they don't really have a big engage tool. Maple had already used his ultimus on the wave, so he didn't have that poke to answer for a knight kind of chipping away at him. And you can see how much respect PSG give. And it's even good for the 1v1. <laughs> Elk here, level lead down there, poking him under tower. Betty is definitely in pain this game. Meanwhile, the rest of the team here, and they pick this up. Looks like should not be. Well, actually, Skarner heading back over. We'll see if he just clears out. I think he's just going to his camps. I don't really think he wants to challenge this. And it, it's so interesting how many things kind of domino into each other in that bot lane, right? Like Elk getting the reset, then being able to freeze it out. He has the color. There's already 49 stacks left on it. So he's over halfway towards completing it. But because of the way that they then push the lane out, you can see oh, Junja oh, oh, oh. actually getting caught here as Jun going in for the engage on with a great hook and Junja falls for first blood. And to your point, Medic, this is what Prime BLG looks like. This movement from on, constantly shifting around the map, holding positions so then he can get out and work his magic. And now Maple is running, hoping that he can find some sort of way to teleport out of this jungle. But short of magic or a miracle, I think he might be done for. And he gets clipped as well by the accelerated shock blast, meaning an execute is no longer an option for Maple. Shun should be able to chase him down, who dash across the wall with a flap, flap, flap. Knight still chasing here, Glacial Prison used, just to make sure that this dragon is going extinct alongside his buddies. Knight will secure the kill, his second of the game. He was able to get one turret plate before he had to run into enemy territory. <laughs> <laughs> and was chased all the way through. It's a good and, death, good uh, death. A couple, of, uh, a couple extra smolder stacks on his way down at the very least, but yeah, I mean, BLG, really good kind of transition there up from the bottom side of the map all the way through to grab the extra objective. And I think this is where you get to see BLG kind of continuing up on this pressure. The fact that again, on is free hard. He's controlling that wave and bot side sets up for Elk. He's going to take over to level six fairly soon and can start to move up towards him. Void Grubs in a little bit. That's a little cheeky Ultramage though, denying being access to this wave, but now has no ultimate if uh, 
Shun wants to try and move up here into this top side. So yeah, I think he rightfully kind of backs away after picking up the, the, the plate. Yeah. Perfect damage calculation. Gets the plate, uh, denies some extra minions there. And they're gonna need that money because PSG, like their whole comp is set up for late game front to back team fights. Uh, you know, BLG have poke advantages. BLG have options for later for pushing on sides as well. So PSG trying to funnel all their money, kind of huddle together, wait for their later stages where they can really synergize with their five on fives. I will say, if I'm trying to funnel my gold on this PSG comp, I don't think Azure is the one that I really want to ah, funnel it on. You got to point it somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Try and get some on Maple, who's about 700 gold behind in the mid lane, and maybe more. As there's the flash engage from Shun. Maple down again, and Shun joins Knight on the scoreboard. And great gank in the mid lane, managing to get that flash onto Maple, denying him any sort of way to get out of that. And even the ultimate a little bit late for Maple, so he doesn't get the heal. And now for something like the Boy Grubs, Maple has no real access, so that should be going to BLG's way as well. This is exactly the game I was envisioning for yep. Shun when we kept talking about, oh, it's Dream for him. He's a, he got the Sichuan, he's got all these lanes I want to fight. Uh, this is this is him definitely executing quite well on this it. This is also very similar to how MSI went between these two teams. You know, really close sort of games where BLG looked like they're on the ropes, PSG obviously picking up a couple there. But then game five was a one-sided stomp, yeah. you know? It was, it was very, very strong from BLG, so it's... Uh, it's interesting to see that sort of back and forth uh, and interesting to see how BLG kind of wake up across the course of the series. Hubris for Knight. Uh, an item we don't too often see. He's been seeing a lot of play in uh, solo queue recently and in ARAM, but uh, Kobe, do you want to elucidate why he may have gone this? Uh, well, it's obviously because of the world song, Heavy Lies the Crown, and uh, it's, uh, it's a crown. Also, <laughs> if you can't get a murder book, you need a murder crown. <laughs> oh, as we see, Shun getting caught up here. PSG trying to fight it. Bing going in with the Counter-Strike. Woody misses, but gets the charm, doesn't get the knock-up, and now he needs to get the hell out of there. Death Charge onto Ginger. It's another for Knight. He's stacking the hubris. Put them back. Under the ground, Knight finds another double, and there's 19 stacks on his hubris already. Yeah, this is kind of the Knight speciality. He loves his uh, stacking stacks, and <laughs> he's managed to stack up a huge amount already. The, the murder book is what he's most known for in the LPL, which is obviously the the Majors. the fact the major sorry that he's able to get a ton of kills for. But now having the hubris as well, he's just doing the exact same thing. Woody looking for the engage onto Elk, who dodges away with the Killer Instinct, has that flash as well, will have to invest it. Manages to escape the 2v1 in the bot lane. Yeah, I mean, it is a big investment, uh, but well played by Elk in response to both of those. It's kind of, uh, you know, one for one on trades for ultimates and flashes used there with Woody investing everything. Maybe that can open up a place for PSG to attack. It's just, it's so difficult because the, well, set up with a teleport, maybe they... So Betty has no Feather Storm, but does have a Cleanse and a Flash. On's trying to get on top of him to get the Staggering Blows down. They're going to land the Dredge Line onto Woody, who dashes back with a Battle Dance and escapes. Well played by the PSG bot lane to get themselves out of dodge. Yeah, I, the point that I wanted to focus on, though, was the five Grubs now being hit for BLG, because that's going to open up so much threat on these side lanes with Knight and Beam. Because while we focus on the poke, Knight being this far ahead, you can see it on the side of your screens, He's just going to be such a menace in a side lane push. And now having that burn off of five grubs as well, Maple just won't be able to stack up. And sure, he's getting a little bit back for himself here with Junja and um, also Aja keeping control on mid. But as the game goes on, I think BLG have a lot of winning answers to PSG's questions. As a side note, oh, Vin, for a little bit of a fight here. Should be able to force Aja out of this push. Goes in with the Counter-Strike. Knight dives in onto Maple. The quickness coming out as they look to dive onto my, uh, to Knight. Mom is called Azure now on the front line. BLG will disengage. But yeah, that's a side note, you know. There's another, no, no, every fight is like, something's going to happen? Nah, it's fine. Um, hubris, basically what it does, it gives you lethality and attack damage. And then if a champion you have done damage to dies, you get a big burst of extra AD for the next 90 seconds. And that can sack up as well, right? So you get stronger through the course of the fight, through your hubris, which is probably why the, uh, the item was named that way. Makes sense. Yeah. He used to make little golden statues in the fountain, and then yeah, a lot of and them. That, yeah. that made me sad. I love the little golden statues. As Junja tries to hover around this bot side to keep this tower alive, Maple's here as well. Shun is going to meet him. Impale lands onto one. The dredge line short from on. Elks though still looking for the plate. There's one minion still alive. On will now tank up the tower, and Woody 
We'll have a grand entrance and give on a grand exit. I mean, that, that's actually big. Any bit of gold that PSG can get at this stage in the game uh, could be very big for their dream of team fighting their way out of it. And Shin is going to be able to execute no problem, does get all the way into enemy territory. Uh, so no further no benefit gain there. But still, even being able to Skarner ult under tower, uh, find up one kill, yeah. You could also point out that these funnels, uh, Medic, are not in the correct places. This mm -hmm. one went into the support. <laughs> no, that is the right plot. Ah, okay, <laughs> so. okay. Right, but, um, and, you know, a a anything here for PSG try and get them on some footing where they can actually use their fight. But the Rift Hero could be that footing. Shun's still dead. Junja coming back onto the map. Rift Hero is up and available. And this could be a moment where they try and find something, but you can see the Mascar Lane Economy snapshot. Knight is massive right now, and... Even if you don't have Shun here for the start, the poke and the control that he offers is a little bit terrifying for PSG. Knight gets the push out of top side. I'm going to group up around the Rift Herald right now. Bin doesn't have a TP. Azure does. Azure, of course, can keep Bin around in that lane, but might want to just dodge around the side here. Hex flash back across the wall from on to rejoin with his teammates. PSG are looking for that fight. Junja very tanky with the Zeke's convergence. Maple still stacking up, sneezing all over BLG. Woody looking for that flank, has the quickness, has the flash in a couple of seconds. The engage with the Glacial Prison. Featherstorm coming out from Betty, quickness from Woody. They're looking for on, but the Death Charge will lock him up for a second. On now, sacrificed by BLG as PSG managed to find a kill. Bin still pushing in the bot side. Jun being chased out by Aja, but doesn't quite land the stun into the wall. Jun just still looking for Elk, who has the cleanse, but goes for Knight instead. Pulls him back, where's the damage? It's Aja right now. The Keeper's verdict is that Knight is guilty. His hubris has been his downfall as Junja puts him six feet under. There's no way BLG had the correct timer on Aja's teleport, I feel like. You know, they, they kind of walk, walk into this, and even if they had gotten the smite there, this is huge for PSG. Also, just great decision-making from PSG. We talked about the potential poke and everything else that can come through from BLG, but in a straight-up 5v5 front-to-back, PSG, if they can close the distance, are going to be so much stronger, and we get to see exactly that. BLG group up to try and force on towards the Rift Tower. Woody putting pressure on towards the back line, and it's the engage on towards on here that really spells disaster for them as Aja TPs in. On goes down, but trying to even get away from this, they think they're safe under the terror. Maybe they can start to poke back, but the front line of PSG is so tanky. Elk only has the static shiv, and it's the turn on tonight that really seals the deal. I thought we've been warning about this PSG team fight, you know, yeah. fully grouped. They're the ones with the few seconds extra of teleport advantage, and they make it work. That That is not a mistake that you kind of give lightly here. And even the silver lining of getting bot tower was just answered by top for PSG. Now, BLG will get this tower, but you can already look at bot side and see that PSG are going to trade as well. So what had been a good start for BLG is really starting to disappear as Aja now solo under the tower. This could be a bit of risky play. He has the Keeper's Verdict in a few seconds, still has his Flash. Betty trying to come across as well. He's met with Knight. The Accelerated Shock Blast doing a lot of work on, looking for that turret TP coming in from PSG as they look to collapse. On not tanking the tower yet, has that Concussive Blow. Sephiroth's Presence coming out. There's the Quickness. It's only onto the tank so far, but on's the first target. Glacial Prison coming down as well with Slow Maple for a second, but Junja's here to join the Barney to join the fight. PSG find another bin, is being pinged to hit that mid lane tower, but there's still a couple of seconds before he can get on it. Betty's going to try and answer him. He has the Demolish and five grubs, it will be enough to take the turret. But it's the exact same thing again. BLG not respecting how quickly PSG can get across the map. They reset on Bot. Asher goes for Elk. Gets the cleanse out of him in exchange for his flash. A Junja and Woody, though, can look for this. And Elk back in in a precarious situation. Junja just go for the Kaiser. Killer Instinct out. TP behind by Bin as well. The Impale hits on to Elk. Bin looking to do what he did in game one, but the verdict is that he can't get in there. In the end, PSG don't find the kill, but they burn both of Elk's summoners. The biggest thing, too, the objective on the map is all the way on the other side. So PSG going to have to recall now to reset and run over there. They were pinging it. Dragon number three starts to get a little worrisome. You know, BLG, since they already had the five Void Grubs and the two Dragons going their way, if they can put this extra pressure on you by dr grabbing number three and the, and the threat of the soul point, it would still be huge, but PSG, another team fight victory. And that one was, again, off another teleport from them. Let's see them try and just force their way in. They do have to face check, but they can do that because they're so tanky. And they know Knight's top, and they know that Elk is bot lane, right? So Knight still has the TP, but 
Right now, PSG get control of the river with their numbers advantage. Betty's going to be able to push out mid, can open up on that tower as well. BLG going to send Elk across to try and answer the pressure in mid. I don't think BLG are going to fight this, though. They're just looking for that tier two in top, trying to accelerate this chase even further. PSG, not really sure how they want to approach this. Aja has his teleport up, but he's still going to run there. Terra goes down, and now if this Poppy shows on the wave, Jace TP's in. There's the TP in. Azure can TP as well, will answer with one of his own BLG. Moved up as four for now. Bin's gonna join them. Junja trying to get in towards the pit to take the Drake. Unlocked up. The Blade Caller coming back as well, and Junja will land the smite. But Woody goes down first. Shun and Bin, the next two targets. It's support for support so far. Azure still looking for a little bit more. Knight trying to put the damage down from long range. That's what we talked about with this composition, their ability to poke, but in this fight, they haven't really had the opportunity to do so. Junja can look for a little bit more, chucks a rock across the wall and hits. Knight in his back. PSG trying to open up towards this mid lane tier one. Elk and Knight here to defend. There's another wave on its way, though. Yeah, I mean, Jace can try and poke, but you've got two fat tanks in front of you. Can't really get the damage around Ooh. them. Forces the flask with just the raw Skarner ultimate and PSG, another one. And the dragon off the back as well. Junja with these smite steals has been exceptional this series and getting the better of Shun once again. This is where BLG TP Knight in, but because Knight wasn't there, the poke damage isn't really enough, so PSG still healthy enough to go for the immediate engage. On too far forward, he gets knocked up by Woody, and the steal comes through from Junja on falls, and now BLG trying to play this slow. Kite back, look for the poke, look for the damage, but as Kobe was just saying, Aja and Junja are just too tanky at the moment. Yeah, I mean, they, they like locked up Junja. You know, he's, he's like stunned up there, but he took almost no damage. And he's like, well, I'm already next to the dragon. It's fine. Just stay here. Uh, he's <laughs> calm and collected. He's like, I don't have to worry about moving. I'll just land the smite and then brute force. With this composition, brute force is the way you want to play. And that's how PSG have just forced their way back in. And it's a great build from Junja for exactly that reason. You see when the win probability powered by AWS goes down, but he hasn't gone for the hard steal that we've traditionally seen in a lot of Skarners. It's been the Zeke's convergence into Warmogs. Warmogs is one, great against all the poke, but the Zeke's in this instance as well, just helps keep everyone slowed and close to you. And when PSG are trying to chase down these members of BLG, it's exactly what you need. So great decision making from Junja on this build for this, series, for this game. Two items on him, two as well for Maple with the Mana Moon in the Spear of Sojin, two as well for Knight, or two and a half with the last Whisper in his inventory. Maple still sacking up a little bit slow as the hook goes down onto Junja. There's the double impale into the grand entrance, but the charm coming back with the quickness into the blade caller. Look at the CC, look at the suppression on BLG, and look at the flash forward from Betty. He tries to get onto Elk, he can't quite get the damage down. Elk somehow survives through the burn, through everything. Elk is still standing. Oh, Betty wanted it so bad. He saw it in his eyes, so close. But they fumble it there. Elk able to survive, BLG able to survive and fight them off. We do start, need to start looking at the BLG dictionary though, because slow needs to be found at some point in there. Because going for these sorts of plays just sets up for PSG to play with their strong front line. The damage coming through from Woody is insane here in these close quarter fights because he gets so much damage from the feather pullback and oh. the great flash from Betty. But look at the health, the shield. I don't like. He's, he's taking so to red buff low. as well. I, I mean, even the red buff from. Like, I don't know. I know there was one auto that went onto Shun instead of going on to Elk, and I think that would have killed him. I think that would have killed him so close, but I love the fact that Betty's feeling himself enough to go for those sorts of plays in a series like this when your world spot is on the line. Yeah, he had so many feathers down. He yeah. wanted the, the biggest of blade callers. Just needed a tiny bit more. Maybe behind. Elk not here. Knight the first target, Azure. Locks him up for a second, on going forward as well. Azure still trying to chase Knight out. Bin here to join the party as on flashes away. Keeper's verdict on Bin is that he needs to come back in a couple of moments. He's going to TP behind them here, but perhaps PSG have a moment in the 4v5 to really open up. Mon comes down, the Featherstorm used as well, but Bin finds the four-man stun on the back line. El cleanses away the Blade Caller route, and once again, it's Giga Bin absolutely styling on Fools. PSG completely fall to the non-weapon of Bin, but he's an absolute weapon wielded by BLG in this fight, and that will be the Baron taken for the LPL. BLG. I'm sure their fans were not worried at any moment in any 
no. any game in this series. No, could tell you, not at all. <laughs> Honestly, though, now with Baron Buff, it should start to look smooth again for them. They did have a very, very good start to this game. Uh, just ran into a little bit of trouble in the last few team fights. But here's a look at how this one actually started out. And it was a little bit more, uh, you know, risky at the very beginning because of the positioning here through River. And they do get an ejection onto Bin, but he just says, fine, I will teleport back for the flank angle. And the thing is, it's so hard to start these fights without Woody, but this is where Bin comes in over the back, hot ward hop in, even goes for the flash past the feather pull as well from the Zaya. And then I think even maybe leap strikes away a second time, but really nice stuff from Bin. But now with Dragon just up and available, Maple moving back towards the top side, PSG licking their wounds, do not want to fight BLG once more. And the important thing for the poke comp is to be ahead of the curve in terms of items, in terms of damage, and that's exactly where BLG are now. 6,000 gold, their lead. They have three items on Knight. They have two and a half, almost three on Elk, who is going to continue to rattle down damage with those Avoid Seekers. And they can start to siege up and actually really utilize their composition to its greatest effect, which is doing exactly that onto Woody and Junja and just constantly putting damage into the backs of PSG. And every comp with a Bin Jax is just a Bin Jax comp as well. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you have a Sejuani, but he, he's two, over 2,000 gold uh, ahead now as well, working on the Frozen Heart so he can be a tank in the middle. On looking for the hook here, onto Azure, goes in with the depth charge as well. He's impaled the quickness on the back line, but already BLG have taken one kill. It's one for one so far on and Azure falling. Betty having to pop the feather storm. Bin, bin, bin. It's Bin, baby. Already we see Elk killing off Betty. Bin looking for a little bit more as Woody dashes out of the fight. Bin wasn't even really needed, just forces PSG away. Now the tier two in the bot lane, the target for BLG. It's a nice attempt from PSG, but Bin on the flank sets up for BLG to take the fight. Now he's back on towards mid and he's healthy as you like. Maple has hit that execution threshold and looks like PSG are trying to collapse onto Bin. No flash for him, no way out. You gotta feel. Goes back in with the counter strike. No Who needs a way out? This is Bin we're talking about, and then he He's dashes away going. with a leap strike. Put him in the trash, Bin. Does exactly <laughs> what you need him to do in that situation. For a moment, I thought there was no way out for him, but who's locked in where with whom? When there's no way out, look for the way in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a boxer, right? So he just has to dodge everything, but he still gets hit by everything. Maybe it's more of the Homer Simpson approach to boxing, Look where he just absorbs everything. The Sunder Sky then goes in, and there's just no real follow-up because the Counter-Strike denies all of the auto attacks and Maple goes down. Look how close he was to the execute there. <laughs> yeah. So close to that. Maple right? knows. <laughs> what can you do but laugh at the end? 3,000 gold ahead, Knight the same. Overall, BLG. Cresting over towards that 10k gold lead that so often is insurmountable. And for PSG, it is uh, a world full of maybes and what ifs. They've been close on so many occasions, obviously done well to get to one and two, but I think they would have wanted a little bit more with how well they perform from time to time, even the series against FlyQuest as well. It was a very close game in the early game until FlyQuest really began to take it away. They're still looking for more here, though, as Ginger goes in with the Impale. The quickness coming out as well is stopped by the Death Charge, but Knight is locked against the wall, and Bin, even he can't rectify this situation, can't bail them out. The Bay Caller back onto On, who has to flash away himself. Elk now joining the battle, a double counter-strike as the engage goes on to Azure, but BLG have only found one so far. Betty's on that front line, no feather storm for him, and Bin finds it again. I doubted him for a second, but he makes you believe that Jax is the most OP pick in the game. It's Bin again to clean it up for BLG. Bin decimates PSG Talon. And with that, they will be bearing out of the world's championship. But for BLG, it's only one more step on what is a long road ahead of them. BLG are looking to get to two and two to challenge for the quarterfinals to continue to level up as they defeat PSG and go to the next round. Completely unrelated, uh, but if there's any player champion combo that you want a world skin for, I want a world skin uh, uh, BLG for Bin. Bin. Yeah, for, for <laughs> Bin Jax. I mean, it was all about him this series. It was on the back of Bin that BLG managed to make it through in game one, in game two, so often the carry for them. And that's it from us for now. That's it from PSG as well as BLG Take a Dive. We're going to hand it over to the analyst desk.
Thank you so much. I don't think it's unrelated, Kobe, because, and I mean, he keeps doing these things uh, on Jax. And he is also our Oppo player of the series. We went back and forth, and I just wanted to give it to him because of that moment where PSG Poppy ults him out, and then they actually <laughs> give him the in to TP for the yep. flank ward. Um, I think that was sick. And then after that, he continued to completely dunk in style on yeah, them, only yeah. further validating the choice, of course, is PSG do a quick bow. Um, we'll just talk about them in a little 